I would like to start with a few remarks. Being selected as one of the WTCS ambassadors last year truly made a difference, not only in my career, but in my personal life as well. Thanks to the opportunity that Baird created with the ambassador program, it really helped me gain confidence in myself. I learned to be proud of who I am and all the hard work that I put into my future. I remember the day that my instructor asked me if it was okay that he nominated me for this great opportunity. I was in shock. I remember telling him how honored I was to be a nominee. I didn't expect to be selected. I didn't feel that I had that much confidence in myself. I still was very grateful and happy. But then the day came when I received the fantastic news. I was selected as one of the 16 ambassadors my heart filled with joy and disbelief. I cried tears of happiness. From there, I learned that I can succeed in life. I was given many opportunities to speak about my story in front of the audience. I also had the opportunity to bring my oldest of my eight children to hear me speak about our struggles, how we overcame them, and where we are today. Thanks to all those opportunities, I gained many new relationships along the way. I gained the confidence that led me to attend more opportunities outside of the college setting. For example, me assisting the Professional Association of Wisconsin's Licensed Investigators. That is led every year with private investigators throughout the state. I had the opportunity to work with an interpreter I had the opportunity to work with and interpret for API on a case that made headlines in the Milwaukee and Madison area. It was about a death of a child at a farm. That is now, sorry, that is now that, that is, oh, I'm so sorry. That has now caught the attention of legislatures. With that, I would like to say one more thing to the 2023 ambassadors. Thanks to all your hard work and perseverance, you are here today. Be proud of yourself. You deserve this. We all have struggles in life. Life isn't always easy. But you are here today because you pick yourself up. After you trip and fall, you continue on your path You continue on your path to the future you want. That my, that, my friends, makes you resilient. Be proud of who you are. All of you carry the strength and the courage that will take you to your dreams. Just believe in yourself. Now, before we, we hear from our 16 ambassadors, two special guests would like to extend their congratulations and best wishes. As many of you know, Baird, Baird Public Finance is the generous long-term sponsor of the WTCS Ambassador Program. Jordan Masnicka is Senior Vice President of Baird Public Finance and was kind enough to join us tonight along with his colleagues, Debbie Brunette and Justin Fisher. Please join me in welcoming Jordan to share his thoughts with our 2023 Ambassadors. Good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here again. Uh, so last year was the first year that I attended this event. And to be honest with you, I came into it a little blind. Uh, I, of course, spoke with some of my colleagues before coming, uh, my, my colleagues that attended in prior years. And they had nothing but amazing things to say about this event. Um, but I think until you attend this event, it's really hard to understand the, the gravity of what this is all about. So last year, I walked away knowing that this is an amazing event and, and being really excited uh, for this year. I, I, I told one of my partners last year, like, I don't know who's going next year, but I'm definitely coming as well. Um, but yeah, last year, walking away, it's such admiration for the honorees 
from last year. And, and I walked away with, uh, uh, with greater appreciation for the Wisconsin Technical College system. Baird is lucky to be a sponsor for this event. So for those of you that don't know, Baird is a full service financial firm. Uh, we're headquartered in Milwaukee. Um, you may know our uh, financial advisor network. It's the biggest portion of our company. Um, so our employees that work with individuals and their wealth management needs. My colleagues and I are here tonight uh, as part of Baird Public Finance. Uh, so I don't expect you to know what public finance is. Uh, so it's interesting, my wife is a criminal defense attorney. So anytime we meet new people and you, know, you do the small talk of, oh, what do you do for a living? They're way more interested in her. Like, <laughs> nobody cares about municipal bonds, I can promise you. Uh, and honestly, I'm not even sure my wife can explain fully what I do to people. <laughs> um, but in a nutshell, we work with municipalities, uh, counties, K-12 school districts, and the technical colleges throughout the state uh, to facilitate the process of issuing debt to fund needed projects. Um, we work with the majority of the technical colleges across the, day, the, the, the state and have a, a strong, long history uh, of, of a great relationship and, and creating great outcomes uh, throughout the state. My colleagues and I, in our roles, we spend a lot of time working on financing plans, um, attending board meetings. I've, I've probably seen some of you at board meetings. Um, but in our daily work, it, uh, it can be really hard to see that, that ultimate fruition of what our work comes to. Um, and it's just like many of you in your daily jobs, it's really easy to lose track of what that ultimate goal is. The honorees tonight, that's the ultimate goal, right? And all the other individuals that are successfully going through the Wisconsin Technical College System. I firmly believe the tech college system uh, is an amazing path for, for growth and, and development. Um, and it leads to great outcomes for, for individuals, businesses, communities. Um, I've seen it personally within my family and with some of my friends. With that, I no illusions that anybody came here to hear me or to hear about Baird. <laughs> I am very excited to hear from our, our 16 honorees tonight and, and to hear their story um, and, and how the technical college system has helped them develop into who they are now and who they are uh, becoming. Um, so with that, Baird is very honored to be a part of this program and, and I'm really excited for the night to unfold. Thank you. Thanks to Jordan and, and to Baird for its steadfast support of our students and this program. At this time, I'll ask our first group of 2023 WTCS ambassadors to come forward. The Wisconsin Technical College System plans the ambassador program. Dr. Mona Foy is the system president and will share her thoughts with the 2023 ambassadors. Thank you, Rosa. Um, good evening, everybody. I am so glad to be here. Uh, I took the red eye back from California just so I could get here uh, tonight. I would not want to miss this event for anything. Um, just a little bit about Rosa before I uh, let her escape. She's, um, for one thing, uh, she may have uh, stumbled a little bit over the written word, but uh, for those of you that were here last uh, year, she is unrecognizable. Amazing, amazingly um, growth over the last year. This talking to a group of this size is nothing anymore. And I don't think you felt that way last year. Um, she has done a lot of great things um, this last year. And for those of you incoming ambassadors, just so you know, um, she has been uh, speaking to groups of all sizes um, with all sorts of different interest levels. Two very important ones were WISCOR, which I think you're going to hear about. Did you hear about today or are you going to hear about tomorrow? 
here about tomorrow, a great event, um, one of the most exciting ones we have in the system, after this one, of course. Um, she's also spoken to some of our system-wide um, conferences like Common Ground, which brings um, professionals from all 16 technical colleges um, together. So these are folks who do this work for a living and they still um, appreciate hearing from you um, and, and learning about how they could do their work better and more successfully. Uh, I have a couple of, of really good honors tonight. First is to say welcome, welcome everybody, uh, especially the ambassadors and your family and friends that are here tonight. Uh, we are so glad. Um, and the second is to acknowledge your incredible star power. So I don't know if you realize it, but there are a lot of very important people that drove here to the Dells tonight just to hear from you and hear about you. Um, so I need to recognize a few of those folks uh, right now. First, uh, the Baird representatives that are here. Uh, Jordan, you just heard from, but Debbie Burnett and Justin Fisher. Baird has been sponsoring this program for 38 years. Yes. And I can say for a fact that that is the longest continuously running partnership we have with any private organization or any public organization, truthfully, um, of this kind. So it's just an absolutely amazing investment um, of Baird and just a renewed recognition about the importance of the work that we do if you work at a technical college, but also the impact that our students and graduates have on their communities. I, I really cannot thank you guys enough, not just for your support, but for coming tonight and joining the celebration. So let's give them another round of applause. I also um, have to recognize all of my bosses that are here in the room tonight. Um, I'm, I'm so pleased. This is by far and away the largest number of system board uh, members who have attended this event in a single evening. Uh, so I just want to recognize them quickly. Uh, Dr. Rodney Posh, our current board chair, uh, Mark Tyler, uh, Douglas Doug Horton, Holton, excuse me, uh, Secretary Pahashik, there you are, um, Department of Workforce Development, uh, State Superintendent Jill Underly, uh, our board's student member and also a former um, ambassador herself, Megan Barr, uh, Dan Kleckner, John Miller, and Sarah Rogers, thank you guys so much for, for being here tonight. I also need to um, acknowledge the fact that we have an enormous number of college leaders here tonight. Um, 10 of our 16 college presidents, many of our vice presidents and deans are here. In addition to all of the ambassadors, sponsors, and nominators, um, and the representatives from our college trustees and, and college boards. Um, it's just a, a great turnout in recognition of the amazing people that our ambassadors are. Um, and I also need to recognize the fact that we have three of our foundation uh, members here tonight, Wendy Wink, uh, Bob Sorensen, and Dan Clancy. Latter two are my predecessors, so I'm really under a lot of pressure right now <laughs> not to mess this up. <clears throat> and I, I, will, I, I want to acknowledge, uh, Dr. Sorensen was actually uh, president of the system when this program was created. So thank you very much, Bob. <laughs> we also have another partner representative, um, Valerie crispin Trilo. She's hiding now from me, but uh, Valerie works for Ascendium which sponsors another very important student uh, program, our Tools for the Trade program that supports our apprenticeship students with uh, scholarship funds for, to buy equipment and tools for their professions. Um, and that program was in part developed um, based on this program here and Bayard sponsorship of it. Um, the incredible results. Sendium representatives have been to this event uh, a couple of times now. And um, I just want to thank you, uh, Valerie, for, for being here. We're celebrating a 10th anniversary of the Tools for the Trade this year. And uh, in that process, uh, the Ascendium has contributed 1.5 or a little over million dollars to technical college students in that time. It's an incredible partnership. 
Uh, and lastly, I need to thank the, the key event um, and leadership development planners and implementers from my um, office, my colleagues that are here tonight have um, just spent a lot of time and energy preparing, but also executing what is um, truly a highlight of the year um, in the system. So Julie, Drake, we're, you're, yep, Julie, uh, let's give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> Stephanie Glynn, they're the masterminds. Um, but several other people have been working as, I don't know if you all know this, but um, this banquet is just the funnest and um, best part for, for us. Um, but this is actually just a part of a bigger leadership development program that our ambassadors participate in. And that takes um, leaders and mentors to engage with them. Many of them are from the colleges, but a few folks from the system office I want to mention, and that's Leonard Simpson, uh, Colleen McCabe, Sarah Mackey, Jeremy Nichols, Colleen Larson, uh, and Layla Merrifield. Thank you guys so much for all the work that you do. And now to the family and friends that are here, to the ambassadors themselves, um, thank you everyone in the room for everything that you do to support Wisconsin Technical Colleges, but mostly our students. And not just while there are students, but when they're out there in the great wide world making change, because that's what they are. They are change makers and they are the leaders of the future. You are going to hear some stories tonight um, that are gonna make you wanna go out there and change your career or start a new one um, or do something cool. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, they are just an amazing collection of um, individuals. Uh, they have overcome, in some cases, some really big challenges or made some really tough, hard decisions. I don't think there's one among them that, that took a nice, smooth, straight path um, from grade school on through to their technical college career. Um, so they are the doers of this world. They are the makers. Um, and they're the leaders that all of us are going to depend on um, in the years ahead. With that, I can't wait to hear the stories as well. So I'm going to get off and uh, we'll get started. Thank you. Thank you to President Foy and the team that makes this a memorable experience for our ambassadors. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our first 2023 WTCS Ambassador from Black Hawk Technical College, Skylab Berlingame. Good evening, my name is Skylab Berlingame. My education history has been quite the dramatic one to say the least. I've truly had to persevere in my education I graduated a semester early in January of 2019 from Parker High School in Janesville. I then went on to UW-Whitewater that coming fall and completed my first semester as a full-time business student with a 3.0 GPA. I was going strong into my second semester with high hopes and then I was in a very bad car accident in March of 2020. I was driving home from out of state when a man decided he was not going to pay attention and smashed my car into the center barrier of the interstate in Chicago. I had to complete a medical emergency withdrawal from UW-Whitewater because I could not be left alone for the fear of having a brain injury from a concussion I suffered. It was in the fall of 2020 when I was finally co cleared to resume most of my day-to-day -day activities. I was finally able to start driving and just started becoming comfortable in my life again. I applied to Blackhawk and I was accepted. I still had some struggles with learning and adapting to my new lifestyle. Then later in August 2020, I was in another severe car accident. During this time, I was attending classes through Zoom, trying to finish out my semester. After the spring semester started, I found, it out, I found out that I needed to have surgery on my right shoulder. We thought we could save my bicep tendon, but we found out it was too damaged and it couldn't be saved. I then had to complete another full medical withdrawal to make sure my mind and body could heal. I then came back to finish my degree at Blackhawk in the fall of 2021. I applied to become a student worker and I decided I was going to do it in the registration and records office. This on-campus employment opportunity changed my life completely. At that time, I had Professor Charles Quince, 
He inquired about my injury and encouraged me to persevere and never give up on my dreams. No matter what happened, I could do it. I think about how a brand new teacher at Blackhawk could care so much about his students and how registration immediately took me under their wing. When I first started back at school, I couldn't even pick up my own backpack. Now look where I am. I am becoming that staff member who cares on day one and pushes people to achieve all of their dreams. I've spent the last three years dedicated to my studies to show that no matter what life throws your way, you can handle it. There is a way to continue and a way to succeed. It was during my student employment and registration and my time in peer advising that I found what I really enjoy of my working life. I found that I get to be the person who helps others and the working piece to make everyone's life easier while I can still encourage everyone to keep going. I found in the registration office I get to help put students back on track to continue their education. During my time in peer advising, I learned that I get to see the students' dreams, goals, understand their fears. This allows me the chance to show them all of their potential, steer them away from their fears, and get them on track. I can help them understand every bit of their next steps as I'm the one who helps deal with that. Being a student worker, I get the best of the both worlds. I get the loving student community that Black Hawk has built, and I also get the amazing staff guiding me every single day. I want to thank my mom and my dad for supporting me each and every day, and my boyfriend Nate for pushing me to be better. I would also like to thank Carrie and Caitlin for all of their support and dedication to me in making it better. Thank you again to Blackhawk and the staff for this opportunity. Now, from Chippewa Valley Technical College, Rebecca Keller. Hi, everyone. I would like to thank Baird for making this event possible. I would also like to thank the WTCS staff and the CVTC staff for coordinating this leadership experience. My name is Becca, and I'm a student at Chippewa Valley Technical College, and I would like to share a bit about myself and my technical college experience. I started college, when I, when I started college, I had all these expectations of what it would be like. I thought I would be off on my own, doing all the things that I wanted to do and having all the time in the world. Well, that's not exactly how it played out. <laughs> I am off on my own, but it's not exactly as you may think. Doing laundry, paying bills, and shopping for food is not that exciting. And don't forget the daily Starbucks. That's expensive. <laughs> Another expectation that I had growing up was that I'd become a doctor one day. Well, seven-year-old Becca, sorry to tell you this, but you're not exactly going to school for 10 years or doing any brain surgeries anytime soon. <laughs> you are, though, on an amazing path to becoming a physical therapist assistant with the help from CVTC and the technical college system. My journey started off when I was in high school. I had always been a go-getter and knew exactly that I wanted to go into the medical field. My mom is in occupational therapy, and I let and I liked the idea of working with patients in rehab. Physical therapy just seemed like the right career fit for me. I attended River Falls High School and they had great connections to CVTC, allowing me as a high school st student to take classes. They had a couple different options for high school students, ranging from academies that allowed to, you to have a degree by the time you graduated and also dual and credit enrollment. I was able to participate not only in the option of dual credit enrollment, where college classes were taught at my high school, but also in Start College Now, where I took college classes at CVTC while still being in high school. 
I jump-started my college education by getting all my pre-program classes done before starting the PTA program, which saved me lots of time and money. I am graduating next year and going straight into the medical field. With the help from CVTC, getting a job after school is much easier. They connect you to local employers and are able to help you get connected to jobs afterwards. The nice thing about having a PTA degree is there are so many different options that you can go to for after college. I have always been interested in working with pediatrics after surgery and helping them with rehab. For this, I will most likely be in a bigger city and working in a hospital setting. I would not be able to have this PTA degree without the help from the technical college system. My expectation of going into the medical field soon after high school has not been an expectation. It is turning into a new reality. Although college is full of different expectations and realities, and I may not get my fancy Starbucks coffee every day, <laughs> going to a technical college did not change my expectations. And if anything, this experience has exceeded my expectations and that I would not change any of it for the world. I have had so many great experiences from it and will continue to have more experiences in this next year. Thank you. from Fox Valley Technical College, Tukum Pungan. Oh wow. Can you feel me shaking in my heels? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> there's an African proverb that goes, if the sun claims superiority over the moon, let it shine at night. That statement was true until I experienced the summer in the United States where there's sun until, 11, until 10 p.m. <laughs> Faith, gratitude, discipline, hard work, determination, and my least favorite lack of sleep are all the roots to, <clears throat> sorry, are all roots of the, of the tree called success. All students in here can relate. My name is Tukem Funkem. I am a second, I am a second year, year student in the cybersecurity program. Sorry, I can't see. <laughs> I am honored to be the ambassador of our very prestigious Fox Valley Technical College. Backtracking to 2019, when I first stepped my feet in the USA from Cameroon, West Africa, the culture shock was overwhelming. I could not help but imagine how this new chapter will unfold. I was fervently looking for an environment that I could call home, a place where I could find my direction for studies because I, I had just graduated high school and I was confused on, on, what I wanted to, and on what I wanted in terms of career. I ended up wanting to study music. Okay. I ended up wanting to study music, but my amazing but very strict dad told me, only stars make good money in music. <laughs> with, with a stern look in his face, I knew that was an automatic no. <laughs> As an African kid, you're restricted to, to being a medical doctor, teacher, or lawyer, else you are at the bottom of the, of the introductory list. At, Family reunions, in, at family reunions, a nurse is manageable. <laughs> Just imagine if you are a music artist. Yeah, you'll not, you'll not be introduced at the table. <laughs> Dad, I know you're watching this. I love you. 
I like to say that Fox Valley Technical College chose me because after a long time of fighting and deciding on what to do, I had to enroll somewhere and start school. The sooner, the better for me. Fox Valley Technical College welcomed me and gave me, an envir and gave me this environment. Though not, not my initial college choice, but I could not prefer it any other way. Being a sickle cell patient who spent most of her academic year in the hospital, every individual that I have had a one-to-one -one contact with at Fox Valley Technical College has been nothing but supportive. From associate deans to teachers, advisors to friends, the various departments that I have worked with, I am in awe. Fox Valley Technical College to me has changed from being just my college to my family. Aside from being, being very affordable, my reputable institution is an embodiment of brilliance with programs that do not only fit your schedule, but are also designed to accommodate everyone looking for a study, for a, a study conducive environment. As the African proverb goes, education is a great engine for personal development. Fox Valley Technical College gave me the opportunity to leave my comfort zone and to discover my strengths and weaknesses. I came here as a shy and timid little girl, but I am proud to say Fox Valley Technical College has designed me into the strong young lady I am today through all the travels, conferences, scholarship, scholarships, clubs, and the list goes on. My constant, unending zeal to be a beacon of light pushed me to do all this as I wanted to give Fox Valley Technical College what she has given to me. I have also had the opportunity to meet people, to meet new people and make new friends worldwide since our institution is racially and culturally diverse. As the Frenchman says, tout est bien qui finit bien, translated as all is well that ends well. It is in this light that I conclude. Join me as I use my sickle cell disease and my story as an example to represent every student who is here and who is looking forward to coming, who is looking forward to come to Fox Valley Technical College. Any student who has, who has challenges or is impaired and have somehow lost themselves or do not know the direction to take. Join me as I encourage them to remind them that nothing is impossible, as the say, as as the as the word says, I'm possible. Aspire to inspire. I can't end this speech without expressing my profound gratitude to Fox Valley Technical College for being the start of my big dreams. Magnificent Dr. Kelly from Counseling and Advising, ex exceptional Brooke Sumner, and the whole of the IT department. My wonderful Auntie Allison from, and my wonderful Auntie Allison and the whole of Global Ed Education, Student Life, and all outs, and all the outstanding, excellent staff and student body of Fox Valley Technical College. My amazing sister Zita, my marvelous friends and family all over the world, for for their endless support. The biggest thanks to God Almighty. All your love and support keeps me going. The Holy Book says in Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9, two are better than one because they have, because they have good return to, for their labor. I would not have done this, I would, have, I would not have done it without your support. Ladies and gentlemen, please tell a friend to tell a friend. You are welcome home at Fox Valley Technical College. Thank you. Will our second group of ambassadors please come forward? Now, from Gateway Technical College, Dejanay Williams. Good evening. 
Um, my name is Dejanae Williams. It's such an honor and pleasure to be here with you, and I'm proud to represent Gateway Technical College. Just a year ago, I was preparing myself to graduate high school. Reflecting on those past four years was difficult, but it was my time to leave those things behind and start fresh. I didn't let those hardships and challenges define me as a person, but I will never forget how much it has allowed me to grow as a young woman. Student leadership was introduced to me very early on, and it has been my safe place. It was a way to use my skills for a great purpose that will not only impact myself, but those around me. Academically, I didn't feel confident. My GPA wasn't the highest it could have been. I did struggle with anxiety and depression, and I spent my time comparing myself to others' accomplishments. Lucky, luckily, my senior year, I was able to turn that around. I earned better grades, and I crossed that stage. Applying to colleges as a first-generation student was a barrier I had to overcome, especially with having a single parent. Choosing a school that could accommodate to my personal needs was my priority, and after being accepted to 13 colleges, I made my official decision to enroll at GTC. I just wasn't aware of how much my life would change after, just after attending a technical college. Walking on a campus, I only had the goal of being this individual who just wanted to aim better and be high achieving, nothing more. I accomplished that faster, way faster than I expected, and there was much more that came my way. Within the past couple of months, I, I have learned and evolved by knowing the importance of diversity and using my voice as a black woman, trying and not being afraid of failure, and not questioning what potential I have. Those things have helped me become a great leader and an advocate for my peers. Being encouraged to become a campus ambassador was something I was truly moved to do. It was a huge risk for me to take, but I knew deep down that this opportunity could change my future for the better. Connecting with students of all cultures, backgrounds, and ages has made me more open-minded to the idea that nothing is impossible unless you make it to be, and success is only defined by you. No one else can hold that power. My high school self would never believe that I would be a 4.0 student. Being mentored and coached by successful individuals and accepting these big opportunities when this is, the, this is only the kickstart to my journey and career. I would like to thank the Wisconsin Technical College System and Baird for, having, for allowing me to have this opportunity and those at Gateway who have helped and supported me on this journey. You, know, you all know who you are. Everything you do for your students never goes unnoticed and your impact is so great and you are the heart of the education system. You are the reason why we are all allowed to be here to share our stories and find our sense of belonging. Thank you for guiding us to our future success. From Lakeshore Technical College, Sandra Heyer. Good evening. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone here. Uh, most importantly, my three children, two of which could make it, one of which could not. But that's OK. They're up in Eau Claire doing their thing. Um, I also want to thank Baird. I want to thank the whole WTCS as a whole, but most importantly, the three that made it here tonight from Lakeshore, Rachel, Tanya, and um, Polly, and then especially the rest of the staff at Lakeshore Technical College and um, Dr. Carlson for choosing me for this position. I'm very honored. My grandmother taught me to never stop learning. Lakeshore Technical College, also known as LTC or Lakeshore, provides me for that, that for me and anyone seeking to expand their knowledge. My hope is that my experience as an LTC student will encourage others to attend LTC or another technical college near them. I chose LTC not only for its proximity to where I live, but also because of how affordable it is to attend classes here. When I think of the cost, I think of the students who need to explore a few different avenues before they find their chosen career. 
This is not as feasible at a four-year institution because of the significant cost difference. For example, I have a classmate who returned home after attending a four-year college that gave her a six to eight year graduation time frame. The reason is due to the num limited number of people able to enroll in the program per year at that school. This was one of six reasons she chose to leave the program there and come to LTC. In addition to my classmate, I have a coworker who would have chosen to attend here instead of a different four-year college. My coworker obtained her degree from that school, but she also obtained a, st a substantial amount of debt. I am thankful LTC is affordable to all due to the low cost of tuition, availability of financial aid, and the scholarships that are available. As an ambassador, I hope to spread the word about the friendly and supportive staff and the many opportunities there are for their students. LTC makes me feel happy, grateful, and blessed. I feel this way because of the serene atmosphere at LTC. It is based in a rural area. One thing I love seeing is the wild animals on campus. Not only do we see and hear the birds and the squirrels, but we also have the privilege to see some deer. I also enjoy the short walk over one of the two foot bridges on campus. These bridges lead us through the trees where we see the wildlife. As I walk across the bridge, I think of when I was raising my children and the stories we read together. I think of the, the many times we read Winnie the Pooh, thanks to my son Asa, and the Chronicles of Narnia when they were older. The reason why I think of these stories is not only for the nostalgia it brings to me for when it, my kids were close and uh, always wanted to be close and read together is also because of the challenges that were a part of those stories and how the characters overcame the challenges and adversities they faced. As students anywhere, uh, we all seek challenges, trials, and tribulations, and remembering stories like that is encouraging because anything can happen if you put your mind to it. This is such a wonderful and nostalgic moment for me, and it brings me peace and a sense of calm before I start my day or drive home after class. I am currently a certified nurse aide at Rocky Knoll Healthcare Facility. It is an expansive facility in Sheboygan County. I fill a leadership role there by training new CNAs. I love to help new employees from any department, not just the nursing department, because of the saying, the team is as strong as its weakest link. I believe that every person in the building is important and that there is not one department or person that is more important than the rest. I reach out to new staff because the facility size can make a new employee feel lost and alone. I also hope that by doing so, I will have made the team stronger and new employees feel like they have someone there for them. I am enjoying my time at LTC and will share my experience wherever I go. As an ambassador for Lakeshore Technical College, I look forward to expanding my leadership experience and advocacy. LTC is truly unique and wonderful place that everyone should know about. Thank you. from Madison College, Aubrey Kappas. Hello, my name is Aubrey Kappas. I'm the ambassador from Madison College. Um, I've always been the person to be involved in many different things, whether that be athletics, clubs, committees, leadership positions within those said clubs, or classes that push me towards my dreams. I'm always there to jump in and join. Technical colleges let me continue that lifestyle and allow my eagerness to flourish. I originally went to UW La Crosse for a semester because it really was my dream school. I was going for nuclear medicine technology. I was a freshman during fall of 2020, so it was very challenging pushing myself through courses when I was unable to make the connections with not only my classmates, but my professors as well. Classes were large, 
tuition was expensive, and the major just wasn't really looking good to me anymore. I made the tough decision to leave my friends, my school, and transfer to Madison College. My brother was in the radiography program at the time, and I had heard such great things about the courses and professors that it just sounded right. I wanted to stay in medical imaging, and this was the perfect opportunity for me. Since the spring of 2021, I've been enrolled at Madison College. I joined the volleyball team and met amazing people and athletes. I got into the radiography program the fall of 2022 and quickly realized I made the correct choice. With classes being smaller, I know all my classmates. I know all the teachers and they know me. At Madison College, I feel as though the professors take a connection and adapt to each student to incorporate how they learn best into the classwork. Since the spring of 2021, I've learned a few things about technical colleges. I know Madison College is able to give me what UWL could not. I'm able to make those connections to help me succeed. I'm able to excel by having that small classroom environment. We have such a diverse community at Madison College, which allows me to meet many different types of people. <laughs> Tuition is also dramatically less at technical colleges, yet the education is just as good, if not better, than that four-year degree. In just a few years, we learn information and build relationships that will stick with us for a lifetime. Thank you to my parents for always believing in me and supporting me. My grandma for always listening to me ramble about my healthcare stories and for coming here tonight. And my instructor Darcy for nominating me for this position and helping me throughout the program. Also to all the other people from Madison College who were able to make it here tonight. I know I made the right decision choosing Madison College and I hope I can lead many more amazing students towards that decision too. Thank you. from Med State Technical College, Olivia Schultz. Hello, my name is Olivia Schultz. I prepared a speech tonight, but after seeing all the staff that came to support me, I was reminded the real reasons that I went to Med State. I'm currently a second semester nursing student. Before I attended Med State, I knew I wanted to be a nurse after my OMA was diagnosed with stage four cancer. We found out, unfortunately, later on that it has something to do with genetics. It is very rare, and so they cannot really say if we will get it for sure in my family. But I know that it's something I think about every day. When I was looking into Midstate, my brother had poured his heart out to me after having a few too many beers on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> he told me about the great community that he had at Midstate, and how even though he was in a program he wasn't that passionate about, he had tons of people helping him out and encouraging him to find what he really was passionate for. When I came to Midstate, I told them all how when I went with my Oma to her appointments for her oncology, I interviewed 132 nurses. I asked them where they went to college, if they regret where they went to college, and how happy they were with where they currently ended up. Luckily, I didn't really have to ask many of them where, if they regretted where they went, because out of the 132, only one of them did not attend Mid-State. <laughs> that says a lot to our program. So does the fact that we are the fourth highest program in the state. That is not just compared to technical colleges. That's compared to universities as well. I often get asked when I'm going to attend a university after to get a real degree in nursing, and I think that's a shame. The technical colleges are able to offer me such a personal experience. I'm able to learn with people and go on every semester with them, and they always help me study even when I don't want to. I'm able to meet amazing people like Vikram and Natasha, who after years of joining in their little activities finally convinced me to be on student leadership board, which has led to me being here tonight. I couldn't be more grateful for them. I love playing bingo and bringing my mom to it as well. And I love doing trivia, even if I'm the only person to show up. But that's the thing about Midstate is they went and did it anyways. They invited my mom to play with me. They invite her to campus if she wants to come. And even though I'm the only one at trivia, we still play it. <laughs> Luckily, I win, and I usually get a prize. Midstate is not just a school. It is my family. 
and I'm passionate enough to tell anybody that wants to hear about it, I won't shut up. <laughs> I used to think that I was going to come up here tonight and brag about Mid-State itself, which I will, but I've learned so much about every other technical college in the system that I think it's just amazing what Wisconsin has to offer in general. Every single student ambassador here has their own story, and they're proud to tell it. So I think that other people need to realize that technical colleges, probably better than universities, because they don't have all these students who will sit and talk about how great their school is. They don't invite their families to banquets to brag. They don't have people give them gift bags just to say, hey, we care about you as students. And please, come join this amazing opportunity in the Dells just because we think you're awesome. That doesn't happen at those impersonal schools. But it happens in the Wisconsin Technical College system because it is a family. So thank you to Mid-State, to everyone who has thrown this event for us because it has been amazing. I have made so many friends. And thank you to my family who have always supported me, no matter where I went to school, no matter what I went to school for. But they're even more supportive now that I'm going to be able to go out and help all of your families as well. I hope that I can return the favor of the great leadership skills you've all given me today. Thank you. Will our third group of ambassadors please come forward? From Milwaukee Area Technical College, Gerrit Gropsman. Hello, everybody. I'm Gerrit Gropsman from Milwaukee Area Technical College. I'd like to begin by extending my gratitude uh, first to uh, WTCS. Uh, for inviting me here. It's been an amazing experience so far. Um, and really to everybody in this room that came to see all of us ambassadors speak and to Baird for their generous scholarship offer. Um, I'm going to start with something a little bit unconventional, maybe unorthodox, by polling the room on something. On something. So uh, if you have a smartphone here right now, I'd like you to raise your hand. Okay, that's pretty reasonable. Wait, oh, I didn't say put them down. Keep them up. <laughs> so if you have a smartphone and you also shop on Amazon, keep your hand raised. You can lower it if you don't. Oh, wow, that's a lot of people that shop on Amazon. Okay, now of this group, if you love to read, keep your hand up. Wow, okay, great. So this is perfect. I'm going to give you guys a call to action a little bit later in my speech. Just tuck this one away in your back pocket. And uh, um, I'll get to it in a little bit. <sighs> to be honest, I feel a little out of my element dressed in formal wear. When I told my therapist I had to dress up for this event, she told me that she doesn't think she's ever seen me in anything other than athletic shorts or sweatpants. The funny thing is, she's not the first person to have told me something like this. If it were up to me, I'd probably be giving these remarks in athletic wear. I guess I just really love to be comfy, but I do admit that I love an excuse to wear a nice tie. Well, my passion for music is why I decided to pursue a degree in audio production. It certainly helped knowing that you can do the job in a t-shirt and sweatpants without anyone batting an eyelid. While some of my instructors dress erring on the side of formal, most of them present themselves fairly casually, and to be honest, it puts me at ease while I'm learning. Speaking of my instructors, it occurred to me just how grateful I am for the tremendous value they provided to me through their teaching and perspective while attending MATC. When thinking about what a college education can provide, it's easy to just consider the technical skills and academic merits you'll gain from the course material itself. While those are valuable in their own right, seldom discussed or taught to young adults especially, are the intangible benefits and hidden gems of wisdom that exist beyond the scope of specific coursework that can only be found and distilled from an openness to new experiences, a real willingness to learn, and the genuine desire to build relationships with people who share a common passion. 
The domino effect of learning in combination with a growth mindset is cumulative and compounding. And so much of what I've chosen to put my time and energy into recently has be, been either a direct or indirect result of my choice to go to college at MATC and my commitment to be fully present for anything my instructors have to share. I'm grateful beyond words for how enriched my life has become since enrolling there and for the wealth of opportunities afforded to me as a result. I've had the privilege to share my love for soccer by getting to play at the collegiate level last fall, despite being frankly unfit at the time and having never played before in my life. <laughs> All because my coach, Buddy Gentry, liked my attitude and decided to take a chance on me. Fostering my relationship with him led to being offered to coach a kid's soccer team for his club, the AC Toros, before I had even played the first game of my life. And playing for MATC led to a relationship with our school athletic trainer, John Larson, whose wisdom and guidance has helped immeasurably in getting my body to move more optimally and safeguarding it from injury. One of our FIED teachers, Andy Salm, with his infectious positivity and enthusiasm, turned me on to the Huberman Lab podcast after having previously convinced myself that podcasts weren't for me. On the recommendation of one of my audio instructors, Aaron Horn, I became an avid listener of the Six Figure Creative podcast and their hosts through my 100 plus and counting episode binge of their backlog over the past few months, inspired me to finally start building my own freelance home studio business. This spring, I'm coaching two kids soccer teams after a successful fall season, and now I'm here with you attending this banquet as a student ambassador for my school, supported by my loving parents, with an opportunity to share my school experience with you and getting to hear the perspective of other ambassadors from across the state. It blows my mind how fortunate I am to be in the privileged position of receiving innumerable benefits to my life from my education in the form of skills, relationships, wisdom, and perspective, all without going into debt for it. Most shocking, though, is acknowledging that all these things are a consequence of every decision I've made leading up to this moment. It's easy to convince myself that I've been lucky, or maybe that fortune has turned in my favor, but I don't think I would be here if it weren't for my commitment to personal growth, a refusal to settle for mediocrity, and the willingness to face reality and do the hard work that is inherent to being a human being. Cultivating an attitude of gratitude has been a vital component in shifting my mindset away from fear and scarcity and towards love and abundance. This shift has opened myself up to and given me clarity to see the vast number of opportunities and resources available that are around all of us all the time. This moment is where I'm going to come back to the beginning where I found that we have a lot of people that love reading, that shop on Amazon, and have smartphones here. And so. I'd like you guys to just take one second and do a favor for me to open up Amazon on your phone. And in the search bar, type the Go Giver. When you find the product link, it should look like a nice little red book. I'd like you to click on it and add it to your cart. <laughs> I'm serious. I will not ask you to spend your money on it. But I will ask you to put it in your car so that you don't forget that there's a chance that you might want to read this book. When you guys are done, just give me a nice thumbs up or, or something. <laughs> nice. Everyone find it okay? It wasn't too hard to find that one, right? All right, I'll continue speaking. The key to success, I've come to believe, is well articulated in a book I read recently, a book that I have been highly recommended by the hosts of the Six Figure Creative Podcast and that I will highly recommend to you now, The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and John David Mann. It's a parable that immediately became a favorite of mine that packs the five laws of stratospheric success into just 127 pages. This key to success, so the book says, is giving. The first law of success, which sums up nicely the essence of the book's message, is the law of value, which states, your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. This has become a guiding principle in my life, asking myself how I can be of value to everyone I meet, and considering my choices from that perspective has been transformative. 
If it doesn't make sense to you now, then you'll just have to read the book. I've experienced this firsthand with my school instructors. They all have more to offer in value than they receive in payment, and that value is there for anyone to take. I want anyone listening to feel empowered to make a change in their life and to invite in more abundance and fulfillment. In closing, I'll share a quote from the book in the hopes that my endorsement may provide some value to you, the listener. You get what you expect. Put another way, what you focus on is what you get. You've heard the expression, go looking for trouble, and that's what you'll find. It's true, and it's not only about trouble. It's true about everything. Go looking for conflict, you'll find it. Go looking for people to take advantage of you, and they generally will. See the world as a dog-eat-dog -dog place, and you'll always find a bigger dog looking at you as if you're his next meal. On the other hand, go looking for the best in people, and you'll be amazed at how much talent, ingenuity, empathy, and good you'll find. Ultimately, the world treats you more or less the way you expect to be treated. I want you to leave here today knowing that this world is an abundant place, and scarcity is an illusion. There is more than enough for everyone. And the way to attract abundance into your life is be unapologetically yourself and use your unique talents, gifts, and idiosyncrasies to serve others and to provide as much value as you can to as many people as you can. You'll be shocked to see what a difference it makes. Thank you. From Moraine Park Technical College, Malia Bugleitner. Hello, everyone. My name is Malia Bugleitner, and I'm so thrilled to be representing Moraine Park as their district ambassador for the upcoming academic year. All of us have a unique story, and I'm so excited to have this opportunity to share mine. Being an immigrant from Thailand who grew up in a single parent household, I spent most of my childhood living in poverty. Um, since my mother never had a formal education, I had always desired to have a formal education. Um, but my journey to higher education did not begin until about 10 years after high school. By then, I had already gotten married, had two children, bought a house, and adopted a dog. I also had a five-year career and I decided I wanted better career opportunities. I also wanted to be an example for my children that if their mom can go to college um, while balancing work, sports schedules, and everything else, then they'll know one day they can do anything. Growing up in the 90s, I always dreamed about um, creating my own game someday. So studying software development was my way of turning that dream into a reality. In comparison to four-year universities, Marine Park was able to offer that flexibility for me to do my classes online, and it was also more affordable. I still, however, wanted to experience college life, so I became actively involved in Beaver Dam Student Senate, District Student Government, Wisconsin Student Government, and Phi Theta Kappa. And it was through these extracurricular activities that I found greater happiness and uh, more ambition as a student. I started seeking out more leadership and volunteer opportunities. A wise leader once told me that if you work hard and you treat people right, um, the rest will come. Living by this philosophy has uh, created uh, countless opportunities for me. Realizing that life is short, at the end of the day, I would rather say I'm glad I did rather than I wish I did. I owe my success to the love and support of my family and friends, as well as the many teachers and staff at Marine Park. Thank you to Lisa and Lucas for the nomination. 
I hope to inspire others to take that leap of faith and remember that if you work hard and you treat people right, the rest will come. Thank you. From Nicolay College, Kimberly Solder. Please forgive me if I mis mispronounce my words as I'm still learning. Buju Indue Maganaduk Anishinaabe Duk, Badue Wayasanokwe Indigenakaz, Migizi Nindodem. Sakaganin in Dunjaba. Hello and good evening, all my friends and relatives. My name is Kimberly Soldier, but they call me Bedwewe Asinokwe, which means here you coming a long ways, lady. <laughs> Very true, my great grandmother gave me the name. It was hers. <laughs> from what I know, Eagle is my clan, and I'm from the Sakagan Chippewa community. Please let me first thank instructors and mentors Elizabeth DeVore and Ellen Mathine for their continued support throughout the last few years. I know I could not have done this without the two of you. As a mother of three beautiful adult children and a glamour of three even more beautiful grandchildren, I am very proud to represent Nicolay College in this way. My babies are the reason I push myself so hard to reach my goals no matter how big or how small they are. My babies are my humans, and they give me strength to be my best. I'm a recovering alcoholic and addict and a convicted felon for drunk driving. From what I thought of was in my life's path, at no time did I see that I would be continuing my education at my age. My focus after finally deciding to make a positive change and live life in recovery was to be a better mother to my children, a daughter to my mother, and a sister to my siblings. Speaking of family, my rocks and my biggest advocates are my mom, <clears throat> forgive me, my mom and my sister Kelly, who are joining us tonight via live stream. <sighs> Kelly gives me the no holds barred truth I need to hear, all the while cheering me on for me to see past the negative things in life that can sometimes weigh me down. She is my driver. My mom, today is her birthday, so I've got to give her a little shout out and say happy birthday, mom. My mom has been the only constant parent in my life. She's the ultimate role model, and one day I hope to be a mother to my children as she is to me. I have been attending Nicolay College since 2015, first started in the administrative professional field. After taking about a year and a half off because life happens, I, along with my sister Kelly, enrolled in Nicolay and took the Native American Tribal Management course that was being offered on our reservation and in our community in 2018. Taking that course, completing it, and receiving my diploma for the very first time ever walking across the stage is why I decided to keep moving forward and to enroll in the business management course. It was also the start of me advocating and promoting others in the community to continue their education because if I can do it, so can they. I encourage others to look past the stigma of how addicts are seen in life and how things are supposed to be. So why not listen to my own words and look towards my future in education, right? With that goal in mind, I started collaborating with the general manager and Nicolay College to host classes in leadership, MS office, business management to be held on site at the Mullet Casino Lodge and Conference Center. 
and giving back to my community and advocating for others like me who struggle with substance abuse, mental health issues, and those not having the not, are having the not so perfect past, I became a member of the Community Coalition of Forest County. Being a member the past five years and the chairperson of the Prevention Week team, I have the pleasure in collaborating with members of both tribal nations in our county, the Forest County Sheriff's Department, the Forest County EMS Services, all to plan week-long events. I'm also a part of the Native American Tourism of Wisconsin and sit on the ex executive board as their secretary. NATO is a group of representatives that work collectively on tribal tourism initiatives. Being a part of things like this is what helps me to stay on track in life with my own journey in recovery and in continuing my education. Tonight, I am proud and beyond the moon because as of this past Saturday, I have finally finished my associate's degree in business management. It is a super proud moment for me, as it is sometimes hard to recognize my own accomplishments in life. <sighs> because all I thought I was all I thought was that I was never good enough or ever strong enough. This fall, I will continue to move forward and work towards a bachelor's degree in business through the Nick Lake College Transfer Program. I would like to give a huge thanks to Nicolay College and the Wisconsin Technical, Technical College System and Baird for this great honor. I will do my best to represent as the 2023 Nicolay College WTCS Ambassador. In closing, if there is anything that I, I would like for you to remember, it is this. Goals are achievable. You, like me, are perfectly imperfect, and that's okay. Love you, be you, and most importantly, do you like nobody's business. <laughs> my Uncle Albert used to say, true story, and this is my true story, is I'll be repping Nicolet all the way. <laughs> Now, from North Central, oh, sorry, from North Central Technical College, Mason Nab. Good evening, everyone. Um, for my icebreaker, I'd just like everybody to know that this is now my second time I have been in front of a microphone. The first time was earlier today. <laughs> my name is Mason Nab. And I'm a student at North Central Technical College. Before I begin, I would like to thank my nominating instructor, James Eckerd, for um, recognizing me for this amazing opportunity. I'd also like to thank my amazing girlfriend, Grace, for supporting me and helping me get my story out there. Finally, I'd like to thank my parents for all the years and advice, the wife complained, um, through the years, because truly without any of these people, I wouldn't be standing here today. Now, I'd like to ask for a show of hands um, if anyone here has attended college and either dropped out, taken a semester off and returned later, or transferred schools. Wow, that is a lot more people than I expected. Think back, do you regret it? Was it worth it? So my story begins September of 2018. I walked through the doors of my first semester at a four-year university. I had my mindset on graduating with a degree in natural resource law enforcement. I was proud and I was determined. 
My passion for my field of interest started at the age of 13 when I became a Wisconsin State Hunter Safety Instructor, and I still do teach today. I teach hunter safety to men, women, and children of varying ages, anywhere from 11 to I've even taught 75-year-olds. It's always been a truly wonderful experience. I was confident that I knew where my life was going. The first two years at the, at the university were interesting, to say the least. Out of hundreds, if not thousands, of students, I had only made three close friends. We had multiple classes together, but we're all in different programs. We had the same classes because during the first two years and into my third year, we had only taken general education courses. And it wasn't until my third year, the middle of my third year, that I had finally taken a class directly related to my field. Now please know, I am by no means bashing my previous university. It is a wonderful school with endless potential, but the environment the school gave didn't really fit my learning needs nor my lifestyle. So it was no surprise that by the time I had finally gotten to take a class directly related to my field of study, I truly had just lost interest. I wasn't doing well in classes. I felt outnumbered. I felt overpowered and unequal. Needless to say, I was mentally and emotionally exhausted and I began to panic about my future. One day in between classes, I was eating lunch at a local park and I was leaned across the two front seats just chilling. Uh, feet hanging out the window as a matter of fact. I was enjoying the scenic views the park had to offer and I was thinking about where I was versus where I wanted to be. And then it dawned on me. I had taken a youth apprenticeship program that NTC had offered through diesel mechanics at my high school. So I thought about it for a few minutes and I began or before the end of my break, I had decided to reach out to an NTC rep who swiftly and effectively helped me get the ball rolling to a whole new future. I had now shifted my aims to pursuing a degree in diesel mechanics. Mind you, this was in the middle of a semester at the UW. I had been working in the field for several years since my apprenticeship, and I knew I was good at it, and I love doing it. Now, I'm not saying I'm the best at it, but I love doing it. So it just made sense, and naturally when something makes sense, people tend to gravitate towards it. I dropped out of the university before the end of the semester, and I took the following semester off of school completely to test my theory. During that time, I worked every day as a diesel mechanic, and I was happy. I was fully content with my decision. So the beginning of the next semester, I was a student at NTC, and I knew exactly what I now wanted and what my new goals were. However, I was worried about what my peers would think of me because I thought I would be considerably older than most. But what I learned was I couldn't have been more wrong. What I found is I am not the only one here or at any of these technical colleges that are a little bit older than others. The feeling of equality and teamwork, in my opinion, should really just be written on NTC's walls. I honestly couldn't have asked for a better experience, as well as the instructors are easy to get along with, easy to learn from, and are more than willing to forge a relationship with you. I believe that this is what makes NTC and all other technical colleges so powerful and so special. Instead of being a face in the crowd, you are treated like an individual and are part of a hands-on learning program. We not only learn from our instructors, but we also get to learn from each other as students. We all have different life experiences and we all bring different skill sets to the classroom. And there's never really been a day that I felt overwhelmed or out of balance. If I had a question, I would simply raise my hand and my instructor would call me out by name and help me understand whatever it is I needed assistance with. It's obvious to me that switching to a technical college was one of the best decisions I could have ever made for myself, and I look forward to class every day, and I challenge myself to learn as much as I can from who I can. And I encourage anyone and everyone to never compromise on what makes or on what you want in life, because sometimes all it takes is hanging your feet out a truck window, taking in a scenic view while eating a fresh ham sandwich, and your whole life can change. <laughs> Thank you.
Will our final group of ambassadors please come forward? Now, from Northeast Wisconsin Technical College, Sue Loy. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sue Lohr. I'm in the Graphic Design and Print Technology program at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. I believe the universe works in a divine and wondrous way in how it shapes each of us through the journeys we travel and the choices we make. Each journey we have traveled and are about to travel defines the limitless possibilities of who we can become. Tonight, I'm honored to be here, to be able to share a piece of who I am how my human experience brought me here, and most of all, to celebrate this moment with all my fellow Wisconsin Technical College System ambassadors and the audience during tonight's banquet. I grew up caught between two cultures. My paternal side from Thailand kept her my birth and became the side to the Hmong ethnic group, and my maternal side, America, who gave the Hmong ethnic group asylum and a new beginning, raised me at age three up until the age of 17 in the saddest city known as Ashkash, Wisconsin. I was raised in a Hmong culture and home with unrealistic expectations to carry on traditions without the influence of my maternal culture, yet expected to be successful in a prestige career field. To be considered good Hmong daughter, I couldn't have a social life. It was deemed inappropriate and frowned upon. To escape being stuck at home, I joined the student council club and sports throughout middle school. When I had to be home, I dreamt of my escape somewhere far, far away from the walls sealed me close from the outside world that were supposed to keep me safe. That somewhere far, far away was in my imagination, buried in books and literatures, which were the closest to experience in life I could get. The Ashkosh Public Library became my second home as I frequented often and happiness meant, happiness and freedom meant flying from one genre wing to the next. I was hungry to know everything, so I explored poetry, philosophy, science, and anything I could get my hands on, even dictionaries and how to prepare income tax with dummies. I felt pressure to contain myself in a cultural existence that reminded me I was a mere daughter who will become a wife, a mother, and a daughter-in-law. Nothing less and nothing more. However, there was this part of me that knew and felt I was more than a daughter, more than a mother, or a wife, or daughter-in-law. I, I neared my junior year of high school, and at the age of 17, I felt the pressure to know what I wanted to do with my life and who I wanted to become. So I dropped out of high school to explore outside the Little Rock I lived under and did some soul searching in California. I got married at age 21, and the thought of starting a family crossed my mind. I wanted to be able to set an example for my children and provide them with tools for success through leading by example. With that in mind, I knew I had to consider a career path that I am passionate about. In 2015, I applied for my first associate degree in criminal justice law enforcement at NWTC, and I started my program that same year. While attending school full-time, I was also working the nocturnal shift at Bellin Memorial Hospital as a part-time patient companion. And I was an active member of the Asian American Student Association. I was eager to achieve professional growth, so I applied the many successful tools that resonated with me from College 101, which encouraged critical thinking, engagement, and implementing textbook knowledge with hands-on learning. With that said, I started to browse the college website to search for opportunities to come and came across the student ambassador page. The central functions of the role and the benefits of being a student ambassador aligned with the direction I wanted to head towards. So I applied for the position and was offered the role in student involvement. After taking on the student ambassador role for one year, Joe Richter, who was my supervisor in the student involvement and presently serves the supervisor role, approached me with an opportunity I couldn't say no to. I was shocked and filled with excitement to take the part-time position at the front desk as an office assistant. With one more year of courses left to go, I found out I was pregnant with my first child and continued to pursue my degree. In May 2017, I graduated. I found out I was pregnant with my second son in fall of 2017 and decided with the father of my boys to move out to California to be with his family.
Excuse me. Life threw me a curveball, and where's the tissue when I need it? <laughs> Life threw me a curveball, and I became a single parent to my boys ages five and six in 2021. As much as I am passionate about my initial intention to serve a, commu a community in the criminal justice field, my boys were a priority and needed me more. The changes led me to dig deep and find my passion, my purpose, and to know what my priorities are. With that said, I left my full-time job as a mental health technician and took a part-time job, uh, part-time position at the YWCA to meet my boys' scheduling needs. I saw an opportunity to pursue another degree that will align with who I have become and what I have discovered about myself through my human experience of 31 years. In spring of 2021, I returned to NWTC to pursue my current degree. Before I was wise enough to find the silver lining that exists within all people, places, things, and events, I was unconsciously functioning on a victim mindset. The hindering mindset of a victim that ruminates on the simple perspective of why did this happen to me, rather than seeing that life happened through me, for me, kept my development sealed in a vacuum of turmoil and grief to find a place for cultural equilibrium. There were days when my self-expectations got the best of me to overlook gratitude and to understand exactly where I need to be, not where I want or think I should be. When I say I am meant to be exactly where I'm supposed to be, I experienced many mixed emotions as a high school dropout, feeling inadequate. If I was not a high school dropout, life would have taken me on a completely different path and I would never cross, and, never, and Northeast Wisconsin Technical College would have never crossed my path who I am today would have been a distant notion of a possibility. I want to thank NWTC for extending profundity to the framework of my growth by the example they set in the workplace and the educational setting. I can testify from the perspective of a part-time staff member and from a student's perspective. I cultivate compassion, empathy, connectedness, and culture and diversity, which brought my two halves that often felt irreconcilably different to find a common ground to coexist by sharing love of stories. I commend NWTC for, pers for the persistent growth they foster and extend to, to all who align with NWTC's vision of finding a cutting edge, lifelong learning college that transforms, strengthens, and inspires. I hope to inspire and instill a growth mindset as I lead by example and how I embody empathy, compassion, connectedness, and understanding to everyone I serve and will be serving. The ripple effect of life starts with inspiring change in one person and one life at a time. And in my final moment, I would like to take the time to express my overdue gratitude to my manager in the Welcome Center and call center Kaylee Truly. She's also present at tonight's banquet. She, not, she nominated me and, and enabled this wonderful experience with heartfelt words that that brought me to tears when I read it during a challenging time. As it reminded me of a grounded and progressive version of myself I forgot for a minute. I appreciate the way you support me from the beginning of my professional start to this very moment. Your sincerity, your compassion, your profession of versatility yet to remain true in self-presence is unforsaken and admirable. Not to mention your emotion overall intelligence to observe the subtleness of all things is what makes you a paragon of all the values NWTC fosters. Thank you for seeing me and hearing me in my most subtle and my most of the days when words are unaudible. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. from Northwood Technical College, Jamie Scott.
Good evening, everybody. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm so grateful to be here with everybody and to be able to add this to part of my story. <laughs> so my name is Jamie Scott, and I am from Northwood Tech. I'd like to begin by saying thank you to Baird and the Wisconsin Technical College System and so many others involved in putting together this fantastic event. Thank you to the staff at Northwood Technical College for bestowing upon me the honor to be their student ambassador. I would also like to take a minute to recognize my amazing occupational therapy assistant instructors, Kristen Roll, Becky Micka, and Anna Polzine for going above and beyond every day and challenging me and my peers to be the best students that we can be and the best humans that we can be. <coughs> and for fueling my passion for the field of occupational therapy. Last, but certainly not least, I would like to thank my husband, Neil, and my children, Carter and Peyton, for supporting me, cheering me on, bringing me snacks when I'm studying, doing all the chores that they hate, like washing dishes and folding laundry, and being excellent clients for me to practice and master my newly learned skills on. <laughs> After graduating high school in the year 2000, I continued my education at a four-year university. At that time, I had no idea what I wanted to do, <laughs> but I went on to the four-year university because I felt that was what was expected of me. So fast forward five years, five major changes, <laughs> and a large sum of student debt I still had no idea what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, after college, I worked lots of jobs, including some in the food and beverage service industry, working as a special education paraprofessional in an elementary school, and um, my latest profession of being a preschool teacher. From the years 2008 to 2012, four of my five most important life events happened in this following order. In 2008, I married my best friend. In 2010, the birth of my son, Carter. In 2011, the birth of my daughter, Peyton. And in 2012, when my son received his autism diagnosis. <laughs> um, at the age of two, my son received his autism diagnosis. This began my family's journey and fueled my passion for the field of occupational therapy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Through my son's therapies, I was able to have a front row seat to the impact that occupational therapy has not only on the individual, but also the families. I've had the privilege of working and learning from many occupational therapy practitioners over the years, including my son's current CODA, who is a graduate of the same program at Northwood Tech on the same campus that I am so proud to be a part of in New Richmond. For 11 years in New Richmond, I drove by Northwood Tech daily, bringing my children to school, to their activities, and um, to therapy appointments. Every time I passed it, I thought to myself, okay, just enroll already, because I knew that I wanted to be a part of the OTA program. Unfortunately, 
there was a tiny little negative voice in my head telling me, you're too old, you're 41, you aren't smart enough, and you're gonna fail. In March of 2022, I'm happy to say that I finally silenced the negative voice in my head and put in my application for the Occupational Therapy Assistant Program at Northwood Tech and was accepted, making this number five on my list of important life events. From the beginning of the process, starting with admissions when I met Jody, and she was so wonderful, <laughs> all I could think was how amazing and supportive the Northwood Tech staff were. It was nothing like the experience I had at my four-year university, which had been so unsupportive and so impersonal. And I'm so happy to say that I'm having the experience now that I wish I would have had back then. The campus environment at Northwood Tech is so positive and focused on helping each student succeed and achieve their goals while meeting them where they're at. Our class sizes are small, and my hybrid program gives me the opportunity to connect with my peers in my program across three different campuses. So New Richmond, Rice Lake, and Ashland. I'm grateful with the support of my instructors, peers, and family that I will be able to add number six <laughs> to my list of important life events when I graduate in spring of 2024. Thank you. From Southwest Wisconsin Technical College, Kyle Roche. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Kyle Roche. Uh, I'm a student state ambassador for Southwest Wisconsin Technical College. I'm from Potosi, Wisconsin, where I graduated high school in 2014. And then I attended Southwest Tech and graduated from the agribusiness program in 2017. I have now returned for two more associate degrees, electromechanical technology and instrumentation and power controls, all while working a full-time second shift job and working on my family's farm. Though coming back to school was an exciting decision for me to make, I never would have guessed it would have led me to becoming a student state ambassador for the college. Starting out, my academic career was not much to talk about. At an early age, I was diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity dis disorder. Because of this, I was held back in kindergarten for not keeping up with the other children. From there on, throughout elementary school, I was put in the special education program for assisted learning students. It wasn't until sixth grade that I realized I had an important decision to make for myself. One day, for no particular reason, uh, I was watching another student get assistance with homework as well. Obviously not doing my own homework. But <laughs> in that moment, it occurred to me, uh, I was not going to be able to rely on somebody to help me throughout my academic career at, a, at all times. Uh, it was then I asked to move out of the special education program and learn how to work independently on my goals. Through lots of trial and error, I did just that, eventually graduating and moving on to attend Southwest Tech. Fast forward to now, I'm almost ready to graduate with my second and third associate degree at a 4.0 GPA and one of the most challenging things I've ever been through. However, I now have the realization that my, about a new realization about my academic career. I realized that even though I'm the one in the classroom doing the work, I'm not achieving my goals without still being supported. Whether it be my family being patient and kind while I spend so much time 
working on school or my coworkers changing their schedules around so that I can attend events such as this or my friends cheering me on and motivating me to, and supporting me to keep working hard. I now realize that I never really truly do things on my own. Although being self-motivated and driven towards goals is import, important, is equally as important to surround yourself with people who can be there and make up for those times when you can't do things alone. So I want to bring you back to a moment in time during my first uh, semester at Southwest Tech. On a class trip during that first semester, uh, we took a trip out to Idaho for a club I was part of called Post-Secondary Ag Students. And one of the stops we made in Boole, Idaho was to visit this balancing rock. It was a monument out there. The group had to walk up a large hill to see this rock up close and get pictures with it. And once at the top, it became aware to us that our instructor, Paul Cutting, had become a little overexerted, dizzy. Uh, he kind of just looked up and like he was seeing stars. And instantly we went into action, got him sat down, got him water, got him calmed down again. And after a few minutes, he came back to us. So with everybody gathered around, Paul said this to us. In the classroom, we've talked about how the day we are born and the day we are passed are two dates mentioned when our time is up. And everything we do in life is summed up by a simple dash that sits in between them. Everyone's dash is different based on how they choose to live. Now in that moment, when things got dizzy and I was lightheaded, it came to me that all I could think about was where I was and the people I was spending that moment with. And if this were my time to go, what a way it would be to go. Surrounded by people who are spending their dash in life doing right by themselves and by others, what a way to live. I took that moment to heart, and it's something I will never forget, and it came from a Wisconsin Technical College experience. It wasn't in any curriculum, it wasn't in any textbook, just a teacher and his students learning about life. And if there's one thing I made sure of from then on, it was to surround myself with people who are also feeling, fulfilling their dash in life to support themselves and others as well. As I like to my, other, my fellow 15 state student ambassadors, to my friends and family, and to all those out here that have attended to support one another, I feel as though I'm still living that lesson I learned eight years ago. So my message is this, being willing to take risks on yourself, go after things that you might be unsure of whether or not you can achieve them. Surround yourself with a strong network of people who believe in you and will support you. Support others as well and give them the strength and motivation pushing towards success and make wise choices. I want to thank everyone who has supported me to get to where I am today Southwest Tech, Baird for sponsoring this event, the Wisconsin Technical College System, my classmates, my coworkers, friends, family, and everybody in between. Thank you. from Waukesha County Technical College, Uzge Erden. Good evening, everyone. My name is Uzge Erden. Um, thank you for being here tonight. I'm so honored to represent Waukesha County Technical College as their district ambassador. I'm an international student from Turkey. Unfortunately, I don't have any family members living in the United States, and unfortunately, my host family couldn't make it tonight, but I have my family, WCTC, here. Thank you for um, being here tonight. That means a lot to me. 
Um, so my journey at WCTC started with the English as a second language course. Before I came to the United States, I was a school counselor at a private school. My students were able to speak English, but I wasn't. This motivated me to learn English. I started looking for opportunities to learn English, and I found out about the au pair program where you take care of kids and learn English. Um, I got on a plane to the United States in, no in November 2018 with a screenshot of Google Translate on my phone. That screenshot said, can I please have a cup of water? <laughs> that was how much English I knew. I needed help with the water. Um, <laughs> after four years, here I am representing my college as the um, district ambassador, also their first international student from Turkey, and giving a speech in English thanks to the ESL course that I took at WCTC. Now I study my dream program, graphic design. I'm not only a student, but also a student worker at WCTC. Before I started my current role as a print student worker, where I get to smell paper for free. I love the smell of paper so much. <laughs> That's the right choice. <laughs> I work at the Welcome Center to improve my speaking and communication skills in English. During my time there, I welcomed visitors, students, and instructors and directed them to the classrooms and offices they needed to go to. As an international student, this was an amazing opportunity for me because I was able to practice my speaking while being exposed to diverse students from all backgrounds. My goal was to create a welcoming environment where everyone feels valued, heard, included at WCTC. I chose to study there for three reasons. First, it's affordable. Second, there is a friendly and supportive environment. And lastly, I receive hands-on learning experience from my talented instructors. I want to thank the Wisconsin Technical College System for organizing this amazing event my instructor, Peggy Cross, who nominated me for this role, my navigator, Beth Seibold, for her sport, my boyfriend, Max, for his sport, my host family, who is sponsoring me as an international student, and my parents, who are watching this live stream at 4 a.m. in Turkey right now. <laughs> I just want to thank them for always being on my side. And if you don't mind, they don't know English, so I want to thank them in my native language in Turkish. They will be watching this. Um, is this this camera? <laughs> um, that one? Thank you. Sevgili anneciğim ve babacığım, her zaman yanımda olduğunuz için sizlere çok teşekkür ederim. Thank you. from Western Technical College, Xander Barr. Good evening, everyone. Uh, <laughs> hi, my name is Xander Barr. I am honored to be here today to express my gratitude to Western Technical College. And I would also like to say thank you to the Wisconsin Technical College System and Baird for this great celebration. I am grateful for the education I am receiving at Western, which is preparing me for my future careers and giving me the tools I need to succeed in a career. I appreciate the hard work and dedication of the faculty and staff who have guided me along the way. Now a little bit about me and my journey. When I was a baby, my mother left me with my father. I lived with my biological father who was a large drug dealer with moral values, who is still on the run today from police. At the age of seven, I was put into foster care by Child Protective Services. 
Luckily, my grandparents were able to take me in, but I was worried all the time and didn't have a lot of friends. This was attributed to my post-traumatic stress disorder. The same year, my grandmother died of cancer while I held her hand. A few months later, my grandfather's health declined and he couldn't take care of me anymore. Child Protective Services then found a foster home who wanted to adopt me. And that is when things got crazy. And the journey of finding myself began. At 10 years old, I was adopted by a loving, therapeutic family with 10 other adopted and birthed children. And that family taught me to find my value in life. As I'm writing this speech, my sweet, loving mother, and this is in her words, so, <laughs> wanted me to let you all know how great her personality is and how wonderful she is. <laughs> but this is true. Because of my parents, I learned how to be a leader, to care for others no matter who they are or where they came from always pushing myself to be better for them and me, to make them proud of the person I am becoming. As my high school career ended, I needed to decide if I wanted to go to college, <laughs> but I didn't want to go at first because I was super scared, like super scared. I didn't know what to do until my mother had told me about Western. She had said what a great school it was, and my mother had started college classes at Western when she was a junior in high school. After hearing about that, I wanted to follow in my family's footsteps. As I arrived at Western, I felt like I had already fit in. The people there were kind and caring. They were not just there to be there. They really wanted to help, and I wanted to do that too. In the middle of my first semester, my grades had started to go down because of personal issues. And I got the courage to finally talk to my instructor, James, about what I was dealing with. And he turned, he told me, sorry, not, he told me not to worry about it. Focus on the things that were most important to me first. And he told me to turn it in when I was done with my missing work. And that's when I realized Western was more than a college. And that's when I wanted to do more for Western. As I was learning, I was helping as much as I could around. Then my teacher, James, sent me an email asking if I could apply to be Western's ambassador. And I was more than happy to. But enough about me. I would like to thank Western employees, Carrie Rayburn, Eric Jacobson, and James Bushman for their dedication to my success this year. They went above and beyond to make sure my first year at Western went comfortably. As a student here at Western Technical College, I feel that it has become a second home to me, a place where I formed lifelong friendships and memories. I will always cherish the time I spent here and experiences I have had. I am proud to be Western's new ambassador. I look forward to representing Western in my own personal and professional lives. As I reach my final year here at Western, I get asked, where will it take you? And I always respond with a smile and say, a bright future. In closing, I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to Western for all that it has done for me. Thank you for your support, your guidance, and commitment to my success. So, so before I go down and take my pictures and whatever, um, I was wondering, because this is a really big moment for me and my family, if I could just get a selfie with all of you guys up here. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> so I'm going to count to three, one, two, three, and then I want you guys to say, technical colleges are the best. <laughs> can you guys do that? Yeah. Sick. All right, let's see here, I, gotta, I think that'll work. One, two, three. Technical colleges are the best. Yeah!
Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, just wanted to let you all know we have had some people who have had some issues accessing the live stream. So um, if that happens to be your family and friends, we sincerely apologize. But please know that we will be uploading the complete video immediately after this. So they still will be able to see it um, right away. They just may not have been able to watch it actually live. But thank you very much. <laughs> Can we please have one last round of applause for all of our 2023 ambassadors? The WTCS planning team would like to recognize all of the college leaders and staff here in support of these 16 students, including the college's ambassador coordinators, those who nominated, nominated these students for this honor, as well as the district system board members, college presidents, vice presidents, and other leaders here in support to support these students and this program. Before we close, I would like to give one huge thank you to the program. I would like to give one huge thank you to Baird. The pro this program would not be possible without their support. I would like to say how grateful I was when I received my ambassador scholarship last year. It really helped this struggling mother, wife, and student out. As you guys heard, a lot of us just need that extra support, knowing that there's others that care about us. And seeing all you guys here today, it really, it really, how can I say, inspires me to continue speaking and telling my story as well. And I hope it inspires all the ambassadors here. And it shows them that there's a lot of people out there that care about them. Baird, thank you for supporting these students and supporting me as well in my journey. Um, it really, it really, sorry. It makes me, it makes me very happy and I'm able to show my kids as well that they're not alone even though, even though we don't know everybody out in the world, people still care about us, people, still want to help us, people still want us to succeed. And I really want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody. And finally, it's hard to imagine these students would be where they are without love and support of family and friends. Please give a round of applause for the family members and the friends of the ambassadors, including those who are here with us tonight and those who could not be here. Thank you all for being with us on this special night. We hope you will join us again next year to honor the 2024 WTCS ambassadors on April 18th. Please travel safely and have a great night.